This is about the negative ultraslow potential electrophysiological correlate of infarction in the human cortex. A discovery by basic and clinician scientists in the field of translational medicine. Spreading depolarization is observed as a large negative direct current DC shift in the electrocortical gram, which propagates in the brain cortex at about 3 mm per minute. The amplitude of spreading depolarization is much larger than that of any other brain wave, including seizures. Therefore, spreading depolarization has the nickname brain tsunami. The spreading depolarization continuum ranges from relatively harmless, short-lasting events in normal tissue to terminal events. Terminal spreading depolarization occurs in severely ischemic tissue. Thus, we recently found that terminal spreading depolarization is the last wave that is recorded in the brain of a dying individual. Spreading depolarization is characterized by abrupt, near-complete breakdown of the transmembrane ion gradients. More sodium ions enter the neurons than potassium ions leave it. Sodium takes water with it. Therefore, the neuronal soma swells and the dendrites beat. Beating causes restriction of intracellular water diffusion. Shrinkage of the extracellular space causes restriction of the extracellular water diffusion. The diffusion restriction is measured as a decrease of the apparent diffusion coefficient which is used to diagnose stroke in clinical magnetic resonance imaging. Accordingly, spreading depolarization is not only the basic mechanism of cellular damage after cardiac arrest, but also occurs in many other conditions including stroke and traumatic brain injury. Of importance is that terminal spreading depolarization marks the onset of the toxic cellular changes that eventually lead to death, but is not a marker of death per se, since depolarization is reversible up to a point with restoration of the circulation. This is one of the many aspects that we investigated in the present paper. The experiments were performed and analyzed by Janusz Lücke. Here I would like you to focus on just two experimental groups. 90 minutes of transient ischemia after middle cerebral artery occlusion in rats and 15 minutes of transient ischemia after middle cerebral artery occlusion. Let us first focus on the 90 minute ischemia group. In principle, the sequence of events after sudden and severe focal cell ischemia is very similar to the sequence of events that occur after arrest of the systemic circulation. Thus, cerebral blood flow drops, and this is followed by spreading depolarization after one to five minutes. As can be seen, spreading depolarization does not return to baseline but gives way to a negative ultraslow potential, which we abbreviate as NUP. Thereafter, further spreading depolarizations occur superimposed on the negative ultraslow potential. If these changes last for too long, the neurons will die. Accordingly, hematoxylin staining revealed a large infarct 72 hours after survival these are the pale areas here. Now let's focus on the 15-minute ischemia group. The onset of the changes is similar as in the 90-minute ischemia group. Thus blood flow drops and spreading depolarization follows. However, if the tissue is reperfused after 15 minutes, the electrophysiological changes are fully reversible in 72 hours after survival no infarct was found in either cortex or striatum. The paper contains an extensive analysis of all the relevant electrophysiological changes during ischemia with a focus on the NUP. 
relevance of these variables to the injury was supported in the rats by significant correlations with the cortical infarct volume and neurological outcome after 72 hours of survival. We then identified NUP-containing clusters of spreading depolarizations in 11 patients with aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage. The NUP-containing clusters of spreading depolarizations were analyzed by Colleen Lemal. This is an example of a 61-year-old male who developed a severe subarachnoid hemorrhage with blood in the left sylvian fissure, basal cisterns, and left lateral ventricle due to rupture of an aneurysm of the left posterior communicating artery. On day zero, the aneurysm was clipped after craniotomy, and a subdural electrode strip was placed over the left frontal lobe. The NUP occurred here at electrodes 5 and 6 on day 3 after the initial hemorrhage. In humans, electrocorticography is performed with platinum iridium electrodes, and this electrode material explains, at least partially, the tent-like shape of the NUP. Here, representative MRI slices of the left several hemisphere are displayed. On day 7, in contrast to the MRI scan on day 2, new large band-like cortical infarctions had evolved throughout the left hemisphere. Hypo-intense in the ADC map, for example here, 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 and hyper-intense in the flare. The new infarcts involve the tissue underlying electrodes 5 and 6. In contrast to the tissue underlying the other electrodes of the subdural recording strip. The lowest row shows the location of the subdural electrode strip over the left frontal lobe and the lesions projected from the MRI scan onto the CT scan. The red labeled area indicates the blood clot in the sylvian fissure that occurred early in the clinical course. The blue regions shows early infarct that were already present on day two. The green areas are the new infarcts that were shown on day seven. Fifty electrode positions with or without NUP of 10 patients were available for the statistical analysis. In this analysis, electrodes displaying the NUP were significantly more likely to overlie a developing ischemic lesion.